Okay, so um, warm welcome from me to everybody. Uh, I'm David Zulkowski and I work for Container Solutions. And yes, today I'm going to talk about uh, Istio, uh, specifically about Istio as a monolith, uh, which was also a surprise for myself even. Um, so we're going to talk why they did it uh, and why sometimes consolidation is actually a good thing. Um, yeah, and what does it mean for the for these users? So, shall we? Um, that's how Istio uh, architecture looked like before. So before they consolidated, of course, right? So we had a bunch of components of uh, Istio itself, like Pilot, Galley, Citadel, Injector, Mixer, and so on and so on. And um, as all modern applications, um, yeah, it was built in, in microservices um, pattern. So each of these microservices had something specific to do. Um, on top of that, we had a uh, few more components on the nodes themselves, um, in the pods themselves. So yeah, that's pretty much how uh, Istio looked like. So uh, in order to explain why actually they changed that, uh, we need to go back and, um, and answer the question, why are we doing microservices in the first place, right? Right, microservices in, ge microservices in general. So there are a uh, few advantages, uh, maybe tons of advantages of going to microservices. We all know that. Um, and these are some of them. So first of all, uh, my, what, yeah, what microservices allows you to do basically. Uh, it allows you to uh, write different components uh, in different languages, right? So if you developing some solution, and uh, in monolith world, you choose at the beginning to, um, to write it in I don't know, Java or Python or whatever, then you need to pretty much stick to that, which means you need to hire people only with that specific skills. Uh, in microservices, yeah, if you decouple that application into a lot of smaller pieces, then each of these pieces, each microservice can be written in different language because then, yeah, then they communicate uh, anyway somehow over HTTP or GRCP. So it doesn't really matter at the end which language they are written uh, in. So you get much more flexibility, uh, yeah, both for your team and, and for hiring, basically. Um, yeah, that's one of the advantages. Uh, the other one, let's say, uh, since we have our application uh, split in multiple pieces, and we can, uh, we can assign teams to take care about only some specific piece, so one microservice, let's say, and then this team, um, yeah, takes care only about what's happening in their microservice. So they don't need to worry about, uh, yeah, what's happening around them, uh, or at least they have to worry much less, of course, right? Still, it's it's still one application, but basically stuff like uh, deployment, testing, um, load testing, most of the stuff can be done within that team without uh, cooperation for for the whole application. So you don't need to, yeah, you don't need to tackle the whole application to, to do a simple change. Um, another advantage, uh, you can have one big system uh, while its components uh, can be developed in different pieces. So, uh, so one part of the system is pretty much stable. Let's say it doesn't change much. Maybe it's closer to the core of the system. So yeah, it doesn't need a new release every day. While different component, maybe it's something related to UI, to front end, uh, you need a lot of testing, you need to get feedback from the users. Um, and basically, yeah, you need different, uh, different versioning of different components uh, for the same application. That's what microservices give you as well. Uh, another advantage, independent scaling, of course. So we have, yeah, we have one big application, uh, which consists of uh, lots of microservices, which means we can scale these microservices, microservices independently. So, right? so we don't need to scale the whole application, which would be probably like the whole machine or something. Uh, if we only need to scale um, API, which, which uh, process the orders, let's say. That's what microservices also gives us. Um, yeah, another advantage, uh, security. Uh, security is actually pretty good, pretty good uh, reason to, to, to go for microservices because um, you can restrict different components of the system um, differently, basically. 
So if you have one big monolith, then you are pretty much limited um, on um, yeah, limiting the, the, the monolith itself. So you can block some access, you can access some access, but if you do that for the monolith, then basically pretty much the whole application either have that access or, 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 or don't. In microservices, uh, yeah, you can restrict some parts, um, some microservices which, which doesn't supposed to do much, like maybe it's just some, uh, I don't know, uh, helper component which basically doesn't do much, but still uh, it it connects to to a lot of components. Uh, but in this case, you can restrict that specific component. Uh, yeah, very much. You can just give I don't know read access only to that component and nothing else. While some more important components need more access and so on and so on. So basically, you can uh, you you are not limited uh, when it comes to security. So these are only a few, uh, just, to, just to give you an idea, a uh, few advantages of microservices. So uh, yeah, Istio was a tool which was developed to, to be used mainly on Kubernetes, uh, which means, yeah, it's, it's modern cloud native application at safe. So it sounds quite uh, natural to do with, to, to write in microservices uh, uh, pattern as well. But, uh, when you actually look closer, none of these advantages applies to Istio. Um, and what I mean by that is that they don't need these advantages. So first, uh, different teams, different languages. Well, they don't need that because they decided, they like, they decided it was their choice to, to write all of the components uh, of Istio in Go, uh, with the exception of, of Envoy Proxy, which is C++, of course. But uh, mo yeah, all of their components are written in Go. So first of all, they don't need that. Second reason, um, different teams, different respons responsibilities. Uh, they don't need that either because they are, uh, yeah, they are one team which develops Istio. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. It's not, a, it's not like a, yeah, I don't know, web shop or, um, or yeah, huge web application which has really a lot of different uh, departments and, and components. Um, next reason, uh, one application, yeah, ability to, to, to release different components um, in different versions. They don't need that either. Um, every single time there was a new release of Istio, uh, every single component was, uh, was released. And that's also um, their choice. They just prefer to, to, to work that way. They, they have testing uh, written that way. So yeah, basically they don't need that. Uh, independent scaling of the components, uh, they don't need that either. Uh, so they have, um, if I go back quickly to the, to the architecture review, um, you see mixer component here in the, in the middle and pretty much uh, that component was the most uh, resource consuming, let's say, and all of the rest, pilot galaxy that they're injector, they were very, very marginal in comparison to, to mixer. So if they need that um, scaling, then pretty much it was basically because they needed to scale Mixer and they pretty much uh, don't care about the rest of them because yeah, they, they were marginal, let's say. So, uh, so the independent scaling, yeah, it, it's not an advantage for, uh, for Istio. Um, and the last one, different security policies for different components. It also doesn't apply here because every single Istio component touches so much in Kubernetes that basically pretty much all of them requires uh, uh, the same privileges. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty that's pretty much it. There is no there is no reason basically for uh, for Istio team to 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 keep doing uh, microservices, and they realize that uh, they realize that that's why they decided to do this. Uh, that's how Istio architecture looks right now. After consolidation, there is uh, one single uh, binary Istio D, uh, which stands for Istio Daemon. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much our monolith right now. Uh, they also did it uh, pretty smart. They basically consolidated all of the uh, all of the microservices into one. It's, it, they didn't rewrite the whole thing from scratch. They just basically yeah, put it into one box. Um, that's uh, that is a first step, of course, uh, but then, mm, then, uh, then advantages. Yep, let's go to that. 
So we know what was the reason behind moving to, to, to monolith, let's say, to, to single binary for Istio. Um, but let's actually discuss um, yeah, what does it mean for users and what do they actually get some benefits from that. So first of all, that's the best slide I have, by the way. So for users, which means for developers or for users, depending how you are using Istio, nothing changes, which means uh, the way how you use Istio, so how you configure um, routing and, and all the canary releases, all the features Istio provides you, nothing changes because there are no changes in the Istio API, right? So nothing changes basically. But for the ops, for operations, for, for operators, for people who manage Istio, like install, configure, upgrade, uh, pretty much everything changes. Um, and pretty much everything changes uh, for better. So first of all, um, by doing that, uh, we have less overhead for Kubernetes. And it's really less, like really a lot. Uh, the thing is, in the previous um, in the previous architecture, well, first of all, we had uh, quite few components. It was like six of them, uh, which means you need to deploy them um, in specific order. Sometimes you need to make sure all of them are up and running. You need to make sure that they communicate between each other. You need to make sure that they have um, specific um, uh, privileges to talk to one to each other, since they were quite of uh, uh, yeah, privileges consuming. Uh, so it was really quite some job for Kubernetes also to, to take care about Istio. Um, so that doesn't happen right now because we have one single binary, binary doesn't need to talk to anything except proxy, of course. So it's way, way, way easier. Um, which, yeah, which leads to easy maintenance operations, um, which means, yeah, people who manage, uh, manage Istio who are responsible for installing or configuring, updating Istio. Um, it's, it's way easier for them right now because upgrade, um, upgrade is just spinning up um, new, new, new pod, new STOD pod with new version, doing Canary, boom, that's it. You don't, need to, you don't need to make sure that all of the components are upgraded. You don't need to make sure that all of the components are in the same version afterwards. You don't need to make sure that this component goes uh, uh, upgraded first before the others and so on and so on, uh, simple. Expanding service mesh onto uh, VMs is easier. Um, yeah, we, we, we had some talks about bare metal and um, we all know that it's, it's, it's becoming also uh, more popular right now. So um, Istio is also uh, trying to, to get a bit of that piece of cake um, to, to be deployed or, or connect Kubernetes in the cloud with bare metal. Uh, so it is possible to, to expand service mesh from your Kubernetes to, to in the cloud to your Kubernetes on bare metal or just, just bare metal machines. And uh, right now by doing this consolidation, uh, they gained also a pretty nice advantage, which is uh, deploying Istio on virtual machines is extremely easy right now because now we just have one component. You just need to spin up that component uh, onto VM and it connects to one single endpoint um, uh, on Kubernetes cluster to, to connect to the, to the mesh and that's it, it's super simple. Um, easier debugging, uh, I put a smiley uh, emoji here because uh, that, was the, that was something I was struggling myself um, at the beginning of my journey with Istio that when something didn't work out or didn't work out properly Mm, I wasn't entirely sure where to start looking, which component should I start look first, which component, like what's the, what's the flow? Like does this component talks first to that one and then to that one or yeah, basically it wasn't super easy. Uh, now it is because there is only one way to, to, to the back right now. So yeah, simple as that. Um, and yeah, overall, easy configuration, shorter startup times, higher responsiveness. So of course, since we have less components, then um, everything is, is lighter, let's say, even though we've put all of the components we had before into one. So you may think it's still the same amount of processing power needed, right? But yeah, it's not the case because a lot of stuff uh, is not needed anymore. Like yeah, communication between these pods, communication between these components, 
quite some configuration had to be done on the Kubernetes itself to allow Istio to work the way it worked. So you had to apply uh, some cluster wide pod security policies in order to, to allow Istio to work the way it worked. Now you don't need, yeah, you don't need a lot of stuff right now because everything happens in, 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 in one single binary in one single pod. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what happened to Istio. Um, so I mentioned that it doesn't, um, nothing changes for the users. Uh, and yeah, that's correct. Although um, the perception from the user is supposed to change because I heard this or something similar than this very, very, very often. Uh, people are interested in Istio, but yeah, I hear often that, yeah, it's really, it's really nice tools, tools, but it installs so, so, so many components, all these proxies, CRDs, yeah, it's basically so heavy. So, well, that argument is basically invalid anymore. So go for it. Um, yeah, so we, we, we've seen what Istio did, like they, they moved from microservices to monolith and uh, yeah, when you read that, you may think that, yeah, it, it's a bit weird move, right? Since everybody is moving to, to microservices right now. But yeah, you really need to understand um, that it's not like microservices are good and monolith is bad. Um, it's not that. Uh, monolith it can be equally good. It, it all depends on the, on the use case. Sometimes monolith is better than microservices like, like we see in case of Istio. So definitely that, it, it, that shouldn't be your picture of monolith versus microservices. And also that picture tells you that if you just um, do lift and shift or lift and shift, as someone says, then, um, then you still end up uh, in something which is um, not really uh, interesting. The difference between monolith and microservices should be more like this. Right, so uh, microservices have some advantages, but they do have some disadvantages as well. And same goes for monolith. Uh, so basically, uh, as soon as you think through um, properly, like whole infrastructure, your whole application, uh, then uh, you may, yeah, you may end up in the situation that uh, that monolith is is better than you uh, for you, and and then, then that's completely fine. You just need to, yeah, you just need to do it properly. So yeah, don't be afraid about uh, monoliths and uh, go check out new Istia. Thank you very much. Cool, perfect. Thanks so much um, for your talk today. Um, it was really interesting to see as in like the whole cloud native world, we always think everything should be microservices. And it's really interesting to see, I, I don't know, one of the like kind of like big, big projects in the space realize that there is also a benefit um, in the monolith architecture. Um, so as people, uh, kind of like get excited from your talk and want to like learn more, uh, how can they kind of like learn more about microservices and Istio and kind of like get more involved? Um, uh, well, I could invite you to, to our blog on container solutions because we, 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 we write there quite a lot of stuff, um, not purely technical, but yeah, more like, uh, yeah, which answers exactly this kind of questions. So yeah, basically helps you to, to, to make the decision about Istio itself. Uh, yeah, it's just the best to go to, the, to their blog. They have also a really nice blog and they explain uh, a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah. Cool, perfect. And we have one question from the audience. So you, mm -hmm. you talked about um, the, uh, now there's only one way to debug Istio. Can you talk a little bit more about what that debugging method is? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not only one way to the back issue. I just it was just a shortcut. But basically, uh, what I meant by that was that um, in previous architecture, uh, we had five, uh, five or six, five, five components. Let's say so. If something was wrong, like the communication between microservice to microservice uh, didn't work, uh, and you you use Istio for for for, for communicating then you had to find yourself kind of uh, which Istio component failed or the configuration is, is wrong on which Istio components. So we had to really tackle a lot of Istio pods to find out where is the issue. And now since it's single binary, then you just need to go to the logs of that single binary and there's high chance that you'll find the, the, the issue right there. 
Cool. So just kind of simplifying, putting it all in one place. Yeah, definitely. Great. Uh, thank you for your talk today. I really appreciate it. It was great to have a little bit of more insight into the service mesh and the whole microservice versus monolith architecture decision. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I'll hand it over to Ellen.